The Zen of Steve Jobs is uh, a graphic novella. It's a story that reimagines a part of, of Steve Jobs' life when he was fired from Apple in the early, mid-80s. Mid it's a dark period of his life that isn't, um, you know, shiny and awesome. Um, and it's also, I think, interesting to, to find out what he went through, but also how he dealt with it. He turned to Buddhism, which he had familiarized himself with uh, both in high school and college. He also turned back to an old friend that he had met over a decade earlier, a Zen Buddhist priest, uh, Kobin Shino Adagawa. Kobin was himself a designer and a calligrapher. The two of them spent a lot of time together and they became really good friends. The more we found out about their relationship, the more the book took shape as a novel about that relationship. The book really looks at, at that period of life and how that study of Zen influenced both the, his coming back to Apple and the huge success the company had had. A lot of those ideas of simplicity, sophistication, beauty, control, um, we think came out of that Zen period. So the way that we kind of thought about this period in, in Steve Jobs' life was kind of like the lost years. It is not only the moment where he is the hero and, and you know, goes away, comes back and does these triumphant things, but it's also a period of his life that we maybe haven't seen. The vast majority of the reporting I did while writing the Zen of Steve Jobs uh, was with um, uh, Zen Buddhists, a lot of them priests now, um, all of whom had either studied under Coben or sat with Steve. It was talking to them about the re public relationship between Steve and Coben, about uh, how Coben taught, what Coben's worldview was, what his strengths were. It was getting tapes and speeches Coben had done in the past. And a lot of the book is actually verbatim the speeches that Steve Jobs gave, keynotes, you know, when he, in, in, when he debuted the iPad or the iPod. But the rest of it is all made up. Other than the fact that we know that Steve had goals to learn about design and that Coben had the capacity to teach him, and we know what Steve took away from that in the end, we don't know how that transpired exactly. Any scene where you see Steve and Coben interacting is what we call a reimagining, where we take all of the background facts that we have and uh, put them into this narrative that we know loosely tells the story of uh, their relationship and friendship. I think that's part of the charm, though, is, is telling the story that had basically happened in private um, and, and doing the best job with, with our creative license to, to make it a story that would be entertaining. So the book is told in a very stripped-down style. We took uh, inspiration from the idea of calligraphy in Zen. It's very quick and there isn't a lot of uh, background. It's very simple and graphic. We wanted to kind of create a, an intimate experience of just these two men, Steve Jobs and Coben, uh, in conversation or alone. Steve and Coben are both very complex individuals. In the end, what we're hoping readers will take away from the Zen of Steve Jobs is a complex understanding of Steve. You have Apple fans and you have Apple cultists. And I, I think the difference between the two is Fans are willing to accept Steve the man, whereas cultists revere Steve as a perfect god, which he wasn't. He was passionate. He was a maverick and all that, but, uh, but the book does definitely re reveal and reflect some of the less attractive aspects of his personality. There's definitely um, lots of sort of angles of the story to be told, but uh, definitely we ended sort of on a sort of somber note and it being sort of more about thinking different and sort of his message rather than a tribute to his passing. It's an inspirational story, uh, but it's also, I think, a realistic business story to know that it wasn't always rosy at Apple and that, that they stumbled and that they, that they got their footing back.